If you are looking to upgrade your car audio speakers to an aftermarket set, you want to know the exact features to look for to get the best sound improvement and performance. Speakers have a ton of different features, so what matters most and what should we avoid? Let's look at the do's and don'ts of choosing car audio speakers. Hey guys, I'm Mark. Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication. On this channel, we learn how to master car audio and how to design, build, and install our dream car audio system. Let's get this kicked off right away with a do. When you're picking your speakers, you do want to consider what frequencies they cover so that you have a full range coverage. As an example, this right here is a three and a half inch coaxial speaker. So it has the three and a half inch mid range and it has a tweeter. Now, if we were to upgrade a car audio system and install something like this in the front of the vehicle, it's important to understand that this speaker isn't going to play our mid bass frequencies. In order to have a good sounding system, we would really need to pair a speaker like this with something like a six inch or larger woofer. By having a combination of speakers like this, we're going to be able to cover the full range of frequencies for sound that we want to hear in our system. That's of course excluding the subwoofer, but in this video we're focusing on the speakers, adding a subwoofer is its own separate deal. So definitely always take that into account. If you only have one pair of locations in, let's say the front of the vehicle, let's say you only have the front lower doors available, you'd wanna use something like what's called a coaxial speaker. Coaxial means that it combines the woofer along with the tweeter. And a lot of times with something like a six by nine speaker, you might even have what's called a three-way speaker where it combines the woofer, a mid-range and the tweeter. That gives you that full range of coverage. You would wanna avoid doing something like just a woofer in the door and not having that separate tweeter if you were using components. If you're not doing custom fabrication and you're looking for the most efficient upgrade process, I have another do for you. Do research the size of the stock speakers in your vehicle so you can match them with your upgrade. A great way to determine what aftermarket speakers will work with your vehicle is to use our show sponsor, Crutchfield. On the Crutchfield website, you can use their vehicle selector tool and enter the year, make, and model of your vehicle, and if they've done the research, you can see exactly what will fit. Better yet, their website makes it very easy to compare different speakers using the compare function. In this video, we're gonna be talking about some different specs that you wanna take a look at, and using this tool makes it very easy to compare between the different models. I've used Crutchfield for many years, long before I ever started the YouTube channel, so that's why I feel so confident about recommending them to you guys. If you guys wanna learn more and get a special offer for car audio fabrication fans, you can check out the link down in the video description. Next up, we have a don't when it comes to picking car audio speakers. Don't think that you need to upgrade every speaker in your vehicle in order to improve the sound. The fact is a lot of us are on a budget. So when it comes to upgrading our speakers, a lot of times it makes more sense to get the most bang for the buck by focusing on upgrading the front speakers first. That's because in the driver and passenger position of the vehicle, most of the sound that we're going to be hearing is going to be coming from that front stage. If I had something like, let's say, a $300 budget, in my opinion, it makes more sense to put all of that $300 budget towards getting really nice speakers for the front stage and not worry about upgrading the rear. There's no reason that you can't do an upgrade in steps. You could upgrade the front speakers first, and then in the future, if you decide to upgrade those rear speakers. Or you could apply most of your budget for the front speakers and get some less expensive speakers for the rear. Next up, another don't, and this one is so important, my friends. When you're comparing speakers, don't think that more watts is always better. The power rating tells us how much power a speaker can handle and serves as a good indicator for if we should use an aftermarket amplifier or just the factory or aftermarket head unit itself. The key thing here is if you are comparing the power handling capabilities of speakers, you want to focus on the Watts RMS, which is more of a constant power handling as opposed to the max Watts. The RMS Watts rating is the continuous power that a speaker can handle, and it just gives us a much better comparison between different speakers. But there are definitely some other very valuable speaker specs that we wanna pay attention to moving forward. So that brings us to our next do, consider the sensitivity value of the speaker. 
Sensitivity is how much sound a speaker creates from the power applied. So a speaker with a higher sensitivity will be louder than one with a low sensitivity with the same power. So the sensitivity spec is very important because if we're only upgrading our speakers in a system and we plan to power them with the factory head unit, we want to look for a speaker that has a high sensitivity and a low power rating. But and this is very important, we don't want to buy based on sensitivity alone. And that's because a lot of times some of the higher end speakers have a low sensitivity, but they have other features that allow them to sound far, far better. And odds are, if you are going with a higher end speaker, you're most likely going to be also adding aftermarket amplifiers to power those speakers. So when we are picking our speakers, that brings us to the next do, we do want to consider the materials that the speaker is made out of. The OEM speakers will use paper for the speaker cone, which can degrade and fall apart over time. Aftermarket speakers will use a much more resilient material. A good cone material is going to be rigid and strong, yet lightweight, and of course it's going to last over time. It's worth researching on the manufacturer's website what the cone material is made of and why their engineers picked that material for the design. Now for tweeters, whether they're component or if they're part of a coaxial, the material for these cones is very important as well. If you personally favor more of a bright sound from your tweeters, typically tweeters that have a hard material for their cone, something like a metal type material will be better suited for your listening preferences. These are definitely all layman's terms here, but if you like more of a smoother sound, typically a tweeter that has something like a silk cone is going to be better suited for you. Another do for when you're picking your speakers, do consider features that allow for install flexibility. The first example being there are some coaxial style speakers out there that has a tweeter that allows you to reposition where that tweeter is aiming. Depending on where the speaker is installed in the vehicle, this can be beneficial to try to get that tweeter more on axis with where you want it pointed. There are some unique speakers on the market as well that will allow you to use them as either a coaxial style speaker or a component style speaker. An example of this being the C3 speakers from JL Audio. These allow for a coaxial style configuration or you can remove the tweeter from the inside and you can add that different plug on the inside of the cone there and make a component style set. Another feature to keep an eye out for with some tweeters, in this case, this is a component set, but sometimes this occurs on coaxial tweeters as well. Sometimes they will have a crossover that allows you to attenuate the output of the tweeter level. So as an example on this C2 component set, I can use the reference level for the tweeter. I can go 2 dB up or I can go 3 dB down. Let's imagine that we're installing this component set in a vehicle where the woofer is down in the door, but the tweeter is up in the sail panel pointed straight at our face. In that case, we might find that the tweeter output is far too loud and we'd want to attenuate it and take it down that 3 dB. Having the flexibility to do that by just switching something quickly on the crossover is very beneficial, especially when you're doing more of an entry level type install and you're not using something like a digital signal processor. But mentioning that DSP brings me to another point. You do want to consider the benefits that adding other components to your car audio system can add for your speaker's performance. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're upgrading the speakers, it's also beneficial to upgrade to aftermarket amplifiers. They're obviously going to provide more power for the speakers, but they're also going to provide a much better signal. Also consider the benefits of sound treatment for when you're upgrading your speakers. By adding sound treatment, you're going to avoid having any annoying vibrations around the speaker. You're going to improve mid-bass performance because now that acoustic energy isn't being wasted on vibrating a panel. It's being used purely as acoustic energy. The benefits of sound treatment are definitely worth considering. Finally, remember that a speaker may sound perfect and amazing in a listening room when it's up on a soundboard and you don't have to worry about any of the reflections or other issues that occur in a vehicle, but once you get that speaker into the vehicle, there are all those issues that you have to worry about. Now, proper install of the speakers is very important to solve a lot of those issues, but a lot of times if we're upgrading speakers in a vehicle and we want to just use the factory vehicle locations, we can use a digital signal processor 
to further enhance the performance of those speakers. We can use a DSP to do the time alignment, control all the crossover points for all the different speakers, but most importantly, we can use it to control the equalization of each of these speakers so that we have a favorable response. If you wanna learn more about that more advanced side of car audio and see some of my other videos for do's and don'ts in car audio, check out these here. Next time you need help picking out exactly what speakers will work best for your vehicle, I definitely recommend show sponsor Crutchfield. You guys can learn more about them and take advantage of a special offer for car audio fabrication fans at the link down in the video description. Thanks to them, along with Mike, Jerry, Mo, William, and the rest of the Patreon membership team. Thank you guys for watching.